On today's episode, we are talking about the success of the SpaceX Inspiration4 mission. We find out how to qualify as an FSD beta tester. Starship moves another step closer to launch. GigaFest is scheduled in Germany. We find out the secrets behind Tesla Glass. A test in Britain seeks to prove that EVs can stand the test of time. And we've got a new update on that Cybertruck camper thing. So let's get going. Kicking things off with a feel-good story today, the crew of SpaceX's first all-civilian flight into space has made it safely back to Earth. The group of four spent three days in the Dragon capsule that took them to an orbital height far beyond the International Space Station. The Inspiration4 crew went further into space than any other person has been since the Apollo moon missions of the 1970s. While in orbit, the team kept busy with scientific experiments designed for them by NASA. They rang the closing bell of the New York Stock Exchange, viewed the Earth through a massive circular window, and had a phone call with Tom Cruise. Why Tom Cruise of all people, you ask? Well, he's actually booked his own SpaceX private flight into orbit for next year. Cruise will be flying to the International Space Station with a film crew to shoot scenes for an upcoming movie. Apart from being the first ever all-civilian space mission, Inspiration4 is, more importantly, a massive fundraising campaign for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. The mission had an initial goal of raising $200 million and had reached a total funding of around $160 million by the time they had splashed down on Earth. Following the mission's success, Elon Musk himself pledged to donate $50 million to the cause, completing the $200 million goal. Tesla will finally be expanding their full self-driving beta test group with an update to the software coming this Friday, September 24th, according to Elon Musk. But that doesn't make it a free-for-all. Like we had theorized last week, Tesla is going to be qualifying users before they grant access to the beta download. We're learning from Elon that to gain approval, drivers will have to prove their good behavior with in-car data. Elon wrote on Twitter, Beta button will request permission to assess driving behavior using Tesla insurance calculator. If driving behavior is good for seven days, Tesla will grant beta access. It's still unclear exactly what behavior Tesla qualifies as good or bad or what context they are using to make those decisions, but Elon followed up to say, Tesla insurance calculator will show status in real time and tell you what actions are needed to be rated a good driver. Then when asked how autopilot affects the calculation, Elon replied, good. <laughs> He also says that the seven day calculation period will begin once the driver grants permission for their behavior to be monitored after pressing the request button. It's going to be really interesting to watch how this plays out with so many new users jumping into the beta testing pool. Just seven days of good driving behavior when you know you're being watched isn't exactly a great qualifier for responsibility. The argument is going to be made that these people paid for the service and therefore should be allowed to use it as recklessly as they so choose. But the stakes for Tesla are very high right now. The risk of pissing off a few customers is nothing compared to the risk they are taking by letting this software out into the world. So far, there have been zero collisions associated with the FSD beta, and that will inevitably change with the new wide release. All it takes is one asshole to set the whole program back by years, and there are an awful lot of assholes out there. The FAA approval process for Starship's first orbital test flight is moving forward. The review has now entered the public feedback stage where people, presumably that includes everyone, are free to voice their opinions to the FFA on why or why not Starship is a worthwhile program. The SpaceX document submitted to the FAA is a 152 page draft formerly called a Draft Programmatic Environmental Assessment. This evaluates the potential environmental impacts of SpaceX's initial mission profile for the program, including launch and re-entry. 
It also reviews debris recovery, the integration launch tower, and other launch-related construction, and local road closures in Boca Chica, among other issues. SpaceX cannot launch the Starship Super Heavy vehicle until the FAA completes its licensing process, which includes the environmental review and other safety and financial responsibility requirements. Interestingly, the report also states that SpaceX plans to perform up to 20 suborbital Starship launches and five orbital flights annually at Boca Chica that, quote, would include lunar and Mars missions, satellite payload missions, and the possibility of human flight to the moon and Mars, end quote. Which is not very many launches, considering that SpaceX designed this vehicle to be launched and reflown multiple times in a day. So, it's hard to say whether that plan is supposed to change in the future, or maybe those five Boca Chica launches per year will be supplemented with several more launches from those humongous oil rig platforms that SpaceX are currently refurbishing into floating spaceports. Either way, you have 30 days starting from September 17th to leave a comment with the FAA in regard to the SpaceX report. Those are submitted via email. There will also be virtual public hearings held on October 6th and 7th. Tesla has opened up registrations for its GigaFest launch event at their new factory near Berlin, Germany. In their invitation, the company writes, Tesla opens the doors of its Gigafactory in Grunheide on October 9th, 2021, and invites citizens of Berlin and Brandenburg to a county fair. Join us to experience the most advanced electric vehicle production plant in the world. It's still unlikely that the plant will be 100% finished by October 9th, but it is a really promising sign that Tesla believes they will be close enough to start showing it off to the public. After nearly two years of controversies and delays with this Gigafactory, it's a huge relief to finally see things moving along smoothly. It's widely expected that the local government will grant full approval for production at the factory in October as well. In even more good news from Germany, it is being reported that the Economic Committee of Brandenburg State Parliament has approved funding for Tesla's battery factory at Giga Berlin in the amount of 120 million euros. The report also stated that Tesla could also receive funding of about 1.14 billion euros in the future from the second European battery cell program, Important Projects of Common European Interest. Tesla recently released a really interesting video on their YouTube channel all about how they make the glass panels for their vehicles. This is not something they do very often or ever really, so it's a nice surprise to get some high quality educational content from Tesla. Most of the videos on their channel are 30 seconds, quick tip style ads that don't even have voiceovers. In the new Tesla Glass video, we actually get to meet the technicians that make the product and hear them explain the process of making it and how it works. It's really cool and something that we would love to see more from the Tesla team. Also, they may or may not have dropped a Cybertruck Easter egg into the video. At the one minute and 20 second mark, we see the back of a dude's shirt that has the Cybertruck on it. Then we cut to a short clip of a humongous glass panel being moved by a forklift style machine. The piece of glass does not look like anything for an existing Tesla vehicle, but it doesn't look like the new Cybertruck windshield that we are familiar with either. This very well could be that new bent glass windshield design that recently came up in some Tesla patent filings for the Cybertruck. It's hard to get a real sense of the shape due to all the reflections, but it doesn't seem like there's anything else this could be aside from a Cybertruck windshield, which is very cool. An original Tesla Roadster was driven from one end of England to the other to prove a point about battery longevity in electric cars. The drive was pitched as a FUD fighting event and also serves as a fundraiser for Zero Carbon World, a UK charity pushing for carbon reduction and EV adoption. The particular roadster used for the drive is making the exact same 870 miles drive that it did 10 years ago when it became the first electric car to drive the entire length of England. The idea of the second trip in the 11 year old car was to prove that EV batteries don't just turn into garbage as fast as many people would believe they do. The result was pretty successful. 
The first trip in 2011 took them 36 hours from Land's End to John O'Groats, while the second trip on September 18th took just 21 and a half hours. Obviously, the greater abundance and higher power rating of modern charging stations has a role to play in that, but I think the point is proven that electric cars, even ones as primitive as the first edition Roadster that ran on laptop batteries, actually hold up pretty well over long periods of time. Okay, we've got some new information about that weird folding Cybertruck camper attachment thing that I may or may not have called a scam in the spring. Given that we were so hard on it back then, it's only fair to follow up and see what they've been working on. The Cyberlander is a box that fits into the back of a Tesla Cybertruck, which can in theory extend up into a solar powered living space, complete with a kitchen, bathroom, and sleeping area. It's a cool idea, no doubt. Even Elon Musk thinks so. He saw the concept video on Twitter and wrote cool in response. But now we've got news according to this Tesla Roddy article headlined crazy Tesla Cybertruck RV mod reveals functional prototype in new ad, which they don't list as sponsored content, but sure reads like sponsored content. This is all a pretty loose interpretation on a 31 second video that includes about two seconds of footage that shows a stack of white boxes moving upwards under power from an unseen source. I'm not saying there is a person inside the boxes slowly standing up, but you can't say there isn't because the windows are tinted black for whatever reason. And if you pause the video at 22 seconds, you can clearly see that the top box is all scuffed up and damaged just from being in the garage, and it may or may not be all held together with glue. That's just what I'm seeing. Anyway, I'm still not saying it's a scam, it's a genuinely great idea, but that is a pretty janky looking pile of boxes, in my opinion. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up, it's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.